Sometimes when you're believing God for something, don't always think it's just going to show up in the mailbox or fall out of the sky. Walking with God means sometimes you've got to wait on Him for wisdom and you've got to take a step of faith and do what you feel is right. Faith is a creative force. It actually goes out into the spirit realm when you pray and you say and you add that obedient action. That faith, words are powerful. And they go out into the spirit realm and they start releasing the power of God and things begin to happen. But when I began to learn these principles of faith and I began to apply them, through praying and saying and doing and praying and saying and doing and praying and saying and doing. Praying and saying and doing and praying and saying and doing. I want to say this enough this weekend that you don't forget it. <laughs> through praying and saying and doing. Confessing the Word of God out loud is a powerful principle that I teach people all over the world. And if you can ever learn how important that is to not just talk about how you feel all the time, although there's a place for that and we're not saying to deny your feelings, but to just talk about your problem and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk, 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 talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Let me tell you something. If, if you've got friends and you've been talking to them about your problems for 10 years, they are tired of it. <laughs> I mean, if they won't tell you, I will tell you. <laughs> And they got tired of it a long time ago. So we'll just leave that there. There was a time when this ministry was just a by faith thing. I mean, you have no idea how ridiculous it is that God called me to do this. I could never get you to understand how ridiculous it is. I don't have the education for it. I was told I didn't have the personality for it. I was told I didn't have the voice for it. I was told I was a woman. It was like, God, I'm a woman. He said, I know. <laughs> so I'm changed. I've had different health issues in my life, and, and God has healed me. I had cancer. I was healed. I had migraine headaches for 10 years. I was healed. Now, when I say I was healed, I wasn't, I did not receive a supernatural miracle, but God walked me through them. He led me to answers. And, you know, I'd like to be one of the ones that just gets miracles all the time, but God just makes me walk a lot of stuff out. And I think that's because He just wants me to have enough experience to be able to share with people who have to do it that way. You know, God does miracles. He's alive and well. And, and the, our, our first line of defense is always to believe God for a, an outrageous miracle. The miracle to me when I had breast cancer was that they found a tumor that was so tiny that they said if a good technician wouldn't have read that mammogram that nobody, that I would have been dead within a year. And he found this little teeny tiny thing, but it was a rapidly, outrageously fast type of cancer that would have grown really, really fast. And they found it when it was so tiny that although I did have to have surgery, None of it had gotten to my lymph glands. I didn't have to take any kind of chemo. I didn't have to take any kind of radiation. I missed two weeks in the pulpit. Went back to work. Sometimes when you're believing God for something, don't always think it's just going to show up in the mailbox or fall out of the sky. Walking with God means sometimes you've got to wait on Him for wisdom and you've got to take a step of faith and do what you feel is right the next step. And I can say that, that I'm healthy. I went to the doctor in December, got a checkup, and he said, you, he said, you could not have a heart attack. He said, that is how good of a condition that you're in. And listen to this, that we have, we all have something called human growth hormone, which starts to decrease as you get older. He said, he's never seen a woman my age with human heart growth hormone as high as mine is. He said, so therefore, you're not getting old either. I'm like, yeah. 
And I have to say this just to do it. My human growth hormone is 100 points higher than Dave's. Just gotta have one area where I got the upper hand, amen? But you know, I also am doing my part. I felt like the Lord spoke to me three years ago, I need to start working out if I wanted to stay strong, and I, I didn't want to do that. But I surrendered. <laughs> I'd love to eat a half a dozen chocolate chip cookies every day with icing on them, but you know, I can't do that. So even if you want to be healthy, there's things that you have to do. You have to do your part. You can pray and say, but you still got to do what you believe God is leading you to do. But now recently I've been having a back issue, and I've had some back issues on and off for a lot of years, and so I work out, get it adjusted. but. You know, I guess I've walked thousands of miles on these platforms in shoes that were stupid to be doing it in a lot of years. I mean, I just have to tell you, now I look at women that have on these five inch high heels, and I'm just going, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to meddle in your business, you can wear what you want to, but I'm just telling you, you better. Of course, you know, I probably wore them a lot more than most people do because I was in a situation like this a lot. It wasn't like just wearing them once a week to church or something. And and just through wear and tear, I got a couple of discs that have some degeneration. So in the last month, I've been having a real issue with my back. Well, first thing you pray for is a miracle. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'm listening to God and I'm doing my part. And I'm, I'm like, okay, God, I get it. I, you know, the doctor gave me home exercises to do to keep my back loose in the meantime. Do I do them? No. When do I do them? When I have an emergency. He didn't say do them when you have an emergency. He said do them all the time. So it's like, you know, I've been seeing things that I wasn't doing that maybe if I would have been doing my part, I might not be in this situation. But three weeks ago, I don't know that I could have stood here. Matter of fact, I had to cancel a speaking engagement at a church, and it was only the second time in 30 years I've ever had to cancel anything. And it was hard for me to do it. But the thing is, is I've been keeping my faith. And I've been praying, and I've been saying and I've been trying to do each little thing that I feel like that God is asking me to do. And I keep praying and I keep saying and, you know, I mean, Dave could even tell you, say, How, how's your back today? Well, back still hurts, but I believe God's working. It's going to get better. So I've even had to have some shots in my back. But the good news is, is it's the best today that it's been in four weeks. So. And why, why am I telling you this? Because I want you to know that everybody goes through stuff. We don't just float around on clouds singing the hallelujah chorus because we're in ministry. I mean, we get attacked and, you know. But in the midst of that, you keep praying, you keep saying, you, you keep it up. You don't give up your faith. You keep it up, you keep it up, you keep it up, and you will have a breakthrough. You will have a breakthrough. I had migraine headaches for 10 years, and it was the first 10 years I started this ministry. I don't have them anymore. <laughs> Haven't had them for the last 20 years. But I had to do a lot of holding my faith and staying in faith and keeping a good confession. And that don't mean I always did it right. I mean, back then I murmured and complained and threw fits and got confused and doubted and full of unbelief and cried and wailed and moaned and quit the ministry every time I turned around. But I'm just trying to tell you, I'm trying to be an example to you to tell you that that doesn't impress God, it doesn't move God, and He's basically just saying, when are you going to shut up <laughs> and start acting like you really believe me? <laughs> Amen? Now there's a time to sit down and tell God how you feel, but then that should take you about two or three minutes, and then you <laughs> need to go back <laughs> to the Word of God. I mean, the Bible is full of stories about people who did things by faith. I mean, some pretty outrageous things. Abel brought his best offering by faith. Noah built an ark by faith. Well, duh, they didn't know what rain was. Why did he need a boat? <laughs> Abraham left home and followed God, and God wouldn't even tell him where he was going. 
He just said, you leave everything first and you start going and I will show you where to go as you begin to move. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11 that he went, although he did not know where to go, nor did he trouble his mind about where to go. Okay, God. Tonight, I guess I'll pinch my tent here and we'll sleep here and get up in the morning and move on. Joseph commanded that his bones would be carried into the promised land because when, when the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt for 400 years, Joseph felt that he had a promise from God that they would be delivered out of there and get to live in the promised land. And he was so sure that when he died, he said, well, it hasn't happened yet, but I believe it will. And I'm telling you guys, you keep my bones from generation to generation. And when you leave Egypt, you take me with you. And 400 years later, when they left Egypt, Moses and the Israelites carried Joseph's bones out of there with him. I'd say that's not giving up. Amen. He still believed it, even though he didn't see it in his lifetime. He still believed it. Now, can I tell you something? You are better off to believe God, even if you never get it than to live your life full of doubt and unbelief and negativity, having a sour attitude and being miserable all the time. Because faith just flat out makes you happy. Faith just gives you a good little rest in a world that can sure wear you out. Abraham and Sarah had a child born to them. And if you go and you look it up, it says that she was past the childbearing age. And Abraham, the Bible says, was as good as dead. That's what it says. That's it. I, I looked it up today. It said, and he was as good as dead. So here you got a man almost dead and an old woman who's already had to change a life. I mean, let's just get blunt about it. And they gave birth to a child that was conceived by faith, a child of promise. And let me tell you something, if you won't give up, you're going to give birth to something too. Did you hear me? Some of you are pregnant with a dream and a vision from God. You're pregnant with hope. You've got some stuff rolling around on the inside of you. You want to be used by God, and it looks like nothing is moving. Nothing is shaking. Nothing is happening. All your friends are against you. Your family's against you. But let me tell you something, God is for you. And he's just looking for somebody that won't give up. He's just looking for somebody that will dare to believe him. People ask me all the time how I feel about what I'm doing now compared to where I came from. And I can tell you, Dave and I sit down a handful of times a year and we just we talk about where we started and what we went through and the old van with bald tires and not having enough money to stay in a hotel and pulling over in a McDonald's parking lot, getting a little sleep so we could drive home after a speaking engagement. Then you have all the silly people that want to be jealous because you can finally drive a nice car. People want what you've got, but they don't want to be where you were. Amen. The Israelites crossed the Red Sea by faith, by faith. Moses left Pharaoh's house by faith. He left a place of comfort by faith because he wanted to help bring deliverance to his people. He chose a life where he would have less in the natural but wanted more in the spirit. I think about the precious, wonderful people that leave America and go live on the mission field for 25 and 30 years in conditions that are unspeakable and how few people even will support them or pay attention to them or even send them a thank you card. But I tell you what, God knows they're there. And if you're somewhere where you feel like you're being unappreciated but you're there because you believe God wants you there, I want to tell you something. 
Maybe other people don't know you're there, but God knows you're there. You hear me? God knows you're there. And he sees your faith. And he hears your words. And he sees every little act of obedience. We're saved by faith. There's no doubt in, about that. We all get that. <laughs> but I, I love what Paul said to the Galatians. In the first three verses of chapter 3, he said, Having received the Holy Spirit by faith, are you not going to reach perfection through the works of the flesh? He was trying to tell them the same way you were saved, that's the same way you got to live. That simple, childlike faith. But see, as believers in Christ, we have another set of eyes. We've got the eyes of the heart. And we can understand things with our heart that you can never understand with your head. I'm particularly fond of this scripture in Hebrews 11:3 that says, by faith we understand how the world was made. Now, I think by faith we can understand all kinds of stuff that our head can never understand. Then we don't have to be confused. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be upset all the time. Because by faith, it's like, I don't know what God's doing. I can't explain it to you, but I know God's working. And I know what it looks like, but I also know what it's going to end up like. Doesn't the Bible say in Romans that there's a period of time where we look like sheep being led to the slaughter, but right in the midst of all that, you are more than conquerors through Christ who loves you. And I don't have to explain to people why, if I'm trusting God, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know. God's got a timetable, and He doesn't discuss it with me. All I know is I'm praying and saying and doing. I'm going to do my very best to do what I believe God's asking me to do, and whatever the results are is up to Him. If I die believing God, and I still haven't got it, I'm going to die believing God. I wish that somebody tonight would get over this thing. Well, God, I'm going to give this one more week. Come on now. No, you need to make the commitment. I'm in for however long it takes, God. And even if I don't ever see anything, I'm in. I mean, faith is amazing. In Acts 3, a man was healed by faith in Jesus' name. In Romans 1, we live by faith. In Romans 3, we're justified by faith. In case you don't, don't know what justified means, it, made, it means to be made just as if you never sinned. We're justified in Christ. Our account is balanced. All debts paid. <laughs> We're made right with God. We're not in debt. We don't owe anything anymore to God. By faith. <laughs> Through the Holy Spirit's help, we actually can anticip anticipate and look forward to good things. When you have nothing, you can look forward to abundance. When you're sick, you can look forward to health. When you're lonely, you can look forward to good relationships. By faith, we look forward to good things. Every day of your life, you should say, I'm expecting something good to happen today. Today, I'm expecting something good to happen. I tell you, all hell hates it when you talk like that. So many wonderful things by faith. People do great things, they do impossible things. Faith delivers you from worry. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, <laughs> praying and saying. <laughs> Let your petition be known to God and the peace that passes understanding. <sighs> Hebrews 4, those who have believed God do enter the rest of God. What does the Bible say in Colossians 1, 4 that faith is? I love this. Faith is the leaning. The leaning. Ooh. 
of the entire human personality on God. An absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. Let me tell you something. God's got the power to help you. He's got the wisdom to know what to do. And He's good enough to do it whether you deserve it or not. All you've got to do is trust Him. If you're weary and worn out and you're frustrated, tonight you can make a change. You say, oh, it can't happen that fast. I read a lot of stuff by Andrew Murray. He's got all kinds of books, and I just like him. He's just a really plain, simple writer, and I just, he's easy for me to read. I, I've tried to read a whole bunch of, like, theological stuff, and I'm sorry, but I just can't get it. I just, it just, I mean, I know there are people smart enough to do it, but it's, I'm not one of them, so... I like him because he's just real simple. And he talked about, in here, about a couple different guys. One of these stories I may read you tomorrow, tomorrow. But a guy named Cannon Battersby, who lived in 1873. And he said that he went to a convention called the Oxford Convention in 1873 that he witnessed having received a new and distinct blessing to which he'd been a stranger before. He said for more than 25 years, he'd been very diligent as a minister of the gospel and from his journals, most faithful in seeking to maintain a close walk with God. But he was always disturbed by the consciousness of being overcome by sin. God does not want us always disturbed about anything. Something's not working the way that it's supposed to be working if you are disturbed and frustrated and upset and have no peace and no joy and you're feeling guilty more than you're feeling right with God. Can I under tell you that? That you, you, something is wrong if that's the way you feel all the time. You don't want to just use your faith to believe God for a thing. I remember when God put on my heart, if you want to really use your faith for something big, then use it to live guilt-free. Because to be able to believe when you make mistakes, if your heart is right and you're really sorry for it, that God will not only forgive you, but He'll work in you to help you change and not keep behaving that way, that takes faith. It takes a lot of faith to have joy when you've got nothing to be smiling about. It takes a lot of faith to be peaceful when it seems like everything's caving in around you. Don't just use your faith to get a new this, a new that, another this, another that, a promotion at work. That's just such a low level of using your faith. We need to use our faith to stand up and be the kind of people God wants us to be in a world that needs to see Christ. He said he was always disturbed. Long story short, he went to this conference and heard a man speak. Just like you're hearing a woman speak tonight. And the man spoke about the rest of faith. And God opened this wonderful Christian man's eyes to see that he did not have to be struggling. <laughs> I pray that somebody in this place tonight will get it. Your struggling will never end unless you give it to God. And if you feel like you just can't do that yet, then I just invite you to go around the mountain another hundred times and come back next year. <laughs> Faith is the leaning of the entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. Faith is the leaning of not some of you on God, but all of you on God. Faith is not just trusting God for your salvation, but then not trusting God with your kids. It's not just trusting God to forgive your sins, but not trusting God with your spouse and your marriage. You don't pick and choose. And sadly, that's what we do. I'm going to believe God for this, but this is, you know, probably over God's head, and I better take care of this. <laughs> we don't think that consciously, but really that's what we're saying. Isn't it? He said, I learned that night that I must take Christ at His word. Come on, if somebody can learn this in 1873, we can learn it tonight. I learned that I had to take Christ at His word. We have to stop reading this and then acting like it's not true. 
Amen? He said, I learned that I must believe without feeling. Take Christ at his word and believe what he said without feeling. It is now eight years since I've known this blessing as my own. And I cannot say that I have never for a moment ceased to trust because I have. But I can say, and I love this, but I can say that as long as I have trusted God, He has kept me. He has been faithful. Well, the Word of God says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it is impossible to please God. And those who come to Him must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I believe without faith it's impossible to live the fulfilling life that God intends for each one of us. Nancy is two years old, but when she was about three months old, something fell on her head and, and the injury basically stunted all of her development and her growth from that point forward. And so she hasn't really been able to, to develop like a normal child since that time. But because of our medical clinics here, she's come back the last two days and they've been able to, to get her the medicines that she needs. They've been able to teach the family how to work with uh, Nancy on, on physical therapy and how to, to, to teach her and train her so that there's a very, very good chance that with these medicines and with you know, the physical therapy that she'll walk someday and that she'll be able to overcome this injury. Nancy's parents have brought her two days in a row because they love her so much and they want her to get the help she needs. On their behalf, as a parent, we just thank you that we can come and help beautiful children like Nancy. Hi, sweetie. You are a beautiful girl. Yes, you are. De muziekleraar van Beethoven noemde hem een hopeloze componist. Een krant ontsloeg Walt Disney met het argument dat het hem zou ontbreken aan creativiteit. Albert Einstein werd door zijn leraar als geestelijk achtergebleven bestempeld. Well, you know, you have greatness on the inside of you too. And no matter how many challenges you have in life, I'm here to tell you, don't you ever give up. De New York Times bestseller schrijfster Joyce Meyer zal je inspireren om ondanks moeilijke levensomstandigheden sterk te blijven. Bestel nu het boek Geef Nooit Op via onze website joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en je krijgt regelmatig exclusief een video van Joyce op jouw Facebook met korte, inspirerende boodschappen die voor nieuwe impulsen zorgen in je dagelijks leven. Dat en meer bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.